Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, if you watched the last video, you'd have noticed that the engines are now in, both front and rear. Um, and I did mention at the end of that video that I'd do another video to explain what the plan is for the various different components and systems throughout the vehicle. Um, so this is that video. So let's jump straight in. Um, to begin with, let's start with wheels. So these are a little bit unique. They are some Oz um, Super T's which aren't unique in, in that sense, but these are off a Seat touring car. So they're actually 17 by nine inch wide and made out of magne the magnesium. Um, all I need to really do on these is to give them a bit of a refurb and get a decent set of tires put on there. Cause they've got some slips on there at the moment, which I don't think are road legal. Um, then brakes on the rear, we've got 312 mil disc with some Porsche four pots. Um, and on the front we've got some 330mm discs with um, some AP racing four pots waiting to go on um, just in the box at the moment wait, awaiting a refurb um, what else with brakes? brakes the brake server and stuff is all back in now um, I just need to figure out a method of allowing me to um, switch the vacuum from the rear engine to the front engine and vice versa and the reason why I need to do that is because I want to run or be able to run um, the engines independent so obviously if I'm running the rear engine then the vacuum from the rear engine has to drive the servo and with the front engine running on its own it needs to drive the servo and obviously when both engines are running I need to decide which one to drive the servo but I'll get to that I'm not quite sure what the plan is yet for that but that's to come so rear engine need to sort out the inlet manifold, exhaust manifold, um, fuel system. Um, in terms of the exhaust, um, I've got three different types to potentially use. I've got a, an ATP style manifold, I've got a spar type manifold, and I've got the OEM um, exhaust manifold that I can kind of fabricate to, to get the turbo to fit to that. Um, we'll have to work out which one is best suited for the rear engine, but we'll, we'll get to that. Um, cooling, obviously we've got our rear radiator set up. Um, the plan now is to put the intercooler in the roof and then um, allow the airflow to come through that front scoop, go down through the intercooler and kind of uh, provide some airflow over the rear engine to keep it cool. And then we'll have some ducting in the rear quarters to feed a, a cowling to drive air through the radiator. And of course we've got the side scoop to flow air through that radiator as well. Obviously that, that needs to be ducted properly to get the, the right amount of airflow through but that should fix the airflow um, for the rear. In terms of the rear um, tailgate, I'm gonna have a knacker duct in there, which will basically drive air through a little box, which will provide cold air through to the air filter and then flow it down out of the bottom. That's kind of the, the rear engine quickly covered. Front engine is gonna be very similar. Nothing really different in it. Manifold's gonna be the same turbo depending on um, fitment because obviously we've got the steering rack which is in the way, the servo um, and other bits and pieces so I'd imagine the ATP style one's going to be better for the front. What else we put on the front? Steering. Steering. The steering rack is a standard mechanical hydraulic steering rack. Um, I would like to run both engines independently so I'm going to drive that steering rack with a Electro hydraulic steering pump out of a Toyota MR2, which is where that center tunnel came from. Um, whilst we're here, we might as well discuss that. That's from an MR2, it's got the, the fuel tank underneath it. Simply put, it's the best place for it, um, right in the middle of the crash zone. Um, nowhere to put it out back, nowhere to put it out front, so the fuel tank will have to go in the middle. I kind of scratched my head for a long time, thinking out what one to use, whether to get something custom made. Came across an MR2, sent them out in fuel tank, electro hydraulic um, steering, just made sense to buy one, cut it up and take its components for this. I've got a swirl pot um, and fuel pump integrated system from Deutsche Works. Um, so that's gonna be placed somewhere over here or over here, um, well away from any heat source. And um, that swirl pot has got two pumps in it. So I can use one pump for each engine. Each, each pump is rated at, I think, 600 brake horsepower. So more than enough for what I need for each engine. Um, so obviously the standard MR2 pump will basically drive 
fuel into the swirl pot. The swirl pot will then provide fuel to both engines. The only thing I need to figure out is obviously both engines at full chat, um, how much fuel they're going to be required or requiring so I can make sure that the standard MR2 pump can feed enough fuel to get to fill the um, swirl pot um, um, with enough fuel so that it doesn't run out of full chat. That's still to be calculated. <laughs> um, as we're in the interior, might as well finish off with what, what's the plan for inside. So I've got a few more braces to brace off from the main roll cage down to the center tunnel and same at the front. Um, I intend to run a dash, um, just to get one. Electrics wise, obviously I've got the standard uh, fuse box, which needs to have some additions for obviously each engine. I might bin some of that and go for some solid state, um, a solid state control panel, but we'll see. Um, if the budget stretches that far, um, and that's kind of it, relatively simple in here, just a couple of bucket seats. Um, ah, shifter, I've got a sequential um, shifter from uh, SQS. Um, so that's going to be fun trying to install that and get it to work with both engines, but that's one for another video. Um, body work wise, I've got a, kind of a, a semi wide arch body kit to go in it because I think it needs some girth. Um, and obviously, I'm running relatively wide wheels and stuff, so they're not going to really fit easily under standard arches so I'm going to go for a little bit of a wide arch I've got some other little bits and pieces with that which I think will look quite nice um, you can see his gaping hole here which which is a, a little bit controversial but I quite like it um, I intend to keep it where it is um, um, yeah that's, that's, that's nothing really more to say on that one I, I like it not everyone will but I think it looks quite purposeful next it's uh, there's going to be a meth tank so the meth tank will sit over here. Um, battery location might be behind that seat, but meth tank's definitely be here. So on this um, rear quarter window, we're gonna have a piece of Perspex with one filler cap for the fuel tank and then one filler tank for the meth tank. Um, and this is the original location for the fuel filler cap, obviously. It, um, as I've mentioned, the fuel filler cap's going to be on the other side. Um, so this is now redundant. So I'm going to use this for the, um, excuse me, location for the filler for the air jacks. So you literally open the flap, prod your um, um, nozzle in there, and then you can lift up the car from the air jacks from this point here. Now you might be asking, air jacks? Why? Um, no reason. I just, I just think they look cool. I've got another justification and I can't think of any good reason for them. I just like them, simple as. Um, what else? Do you want to see what I think? We've, we've gone over all the plans, there's, there's a lot to do there. Obviously, the body works have to get fitted and painted and stuff, but but yeah, that's 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 kind of it. So what the intention now is to do is, bit by bit, over each of the things I've explained, I'm going to do a separate video. So separate video on getting the wheels refurbished and new tyres put on finishing the brakes, refurbishing those obviously, rear engine exhausts, blah, 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 front engine, and, and it goes on. So hopefully there'll be a decent stream of videos with some progress, which is what we all want, progress, because I, I, I want to see this thing finished as soon as humanly possible. And obviously as we're in this lockdown, we've all got lots of time on our hands as long as we're keeping safe. Um, so uh, let's see what we can accomplish over the next few weeks, stroke months. Anyway, that's it from this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch up on the next one. Cheers, bye.